So we're looking at a live PLC program running in an Allen Bradley Micrologic 1100 PLC. This is the PLC over here. That's the unit. We'll connect it through Ethernet. It has a single expansion card with analog inputs on it. And we're reading one of the input channels here and then running that through a scale with parameters instruction and scaling that to a floating point value. So let's come over here to the program. And here is where we see that floating, uh, that uh, scale instruction here, the bottom of it. We're taking the input on uh, slot one, channel one, and we're scaling that to a floating point value. Right now we have nothing connected to that input channel, so we're reading a negative. So don't pay attention to the sign. It's not relevant to our discussion here. What is relevant is what we're doing with that value next. We are taking, taking the fa colon one value here down to a multiply function block. You'll notice that fa colon one is the input source a to that block. We're then taking that value and multiplying by an integer number of 12 to get hopefully a larger value here, which we put right back into F8 colon 1. Well, notice this. We have a value of negative 28.4. We're multiplying by 12, and we get negative 28.4. Sure doesn't look like anything got multiplied here. And at first we thought maybe this multiply function block was not doing its job. So we did some uh, changes to the program. What we did is instead of reusing F8 colon 1 twice, we put in a different F8 uh, floating point register value so that the SCP instruction would output a number in uh, some different register, and then that would get multiplied by 12 and then put into F8 colon 1. And when we did that, everything worked the way we expected to. We saw the output of the SCP instruction was actually very, a very small number and uh, a little over 2, and got multiplied by 12 and got turned into negative 28. So we're wondering, why is it doing this here? Well, it turns out that this is actually doing what it should. This program is actually functioning in the way it ought to function. We're taking the value from F81, multiplying by 12, we're sticking that value back in F81. The actual result, the actual product here is minus 28.4. So then why do we see the same minus 28.4 here and here? Shouldn't that be smaller and that be larger? Well, this is a very important lesson when you're using live displays on a running PLC. And the lesson being, what you see on the screen is not necessarily what is happening in the order of operations in that program. What's actually happening here is the real value of F8 colon 1 after this instruction is a little greater than negative 2. And that's what you should see there. Then it gets multiplied by 12, and then you should see the minus 28.4 there. You don't see that because of the way that the laptop communicates with the PLC. It does not communicate in real time, line by line, through the scan. It communicates after the entire program has been scanned. So the program does its job. It calculates F81, then multiplies, puts it back in F81. So F81 actually has two different values at different points in the program's execution. But none of that gets communicated to the laptop until after the scan is done and the PLC handles all its overhead tasks of communication. So when the laptop goes to display it, the RS Logic software here takes the value it read for F81 and puts that everywhere it sees F81, which is not what's actually happening in real execution time through that program. So beware. Funny things like this can happen in PLCs, but the program's actually doing what it should, but it doesn't look like it at first blush looking at the live display.